Today, we're going to explore an organization that is incorporating thought leadership into its strategic objective. Starbucks. So, Starbucks is interesting. It seems like they've spent quite a bit of time developing this sort of broad mission statement that has more of an emotional feel than a mission like many other corporations with something specific that you measure it by. Howard Schultz, CEO of the company, said, Everything we've done to date sits on the foundation of wonderful experiences that many of us have had in Italy. Creating that je ne sais quoi feel of nurturing, of a nurturing culture and community is not, it's not really easy. And based on their first entry into Italy this year, Starbucks is really determined to get it right. The Starbucks vision is not really available on the corporate web website, but uh, through some careful reading, Starbucks has a very clearly defined end goal in mind. This type of vision is something that, uh, that I feel can be realized through careful thought strategy development. In 1971, Starbucks was just a, a roaster and a retailer of coffee beans, tea, and spices. Over the past four decades, Starbucks has grown into a large, public, almost $85 billion global industry with over 25,000 stores all around the world. They've become a very well-known brand with significant market penetration and financial leverage. Starbucks market performance over the past decade has also been quite impressive. They've outperformed the S&P by roughly 400% from 2009 through 2015. And they've managed to maintain a general positive sentiment from among uh, financial analysts. However, over the past 18 to 20 months or so, their growth has been relatively stagnant and investors have been getting better returns from broad market indices over Starbucks in the same period. According to a few analyst reviews and earnings call, earning call reports, management has attributed this slowdown to a variety of e-commerce issues. Last summer, the loyalty program transition was blamed particularly because of competitive beverage deals that were going on uh, at the same time. More recently, in the first quarter of 2017, this year, relatively new mobile ordering process was attributed for the slowing down of ordering or, or for driving too much demand at peak times to short staff stores. Regardless of the practical reasons for the slowdown, a strong thought leadership strategy could help usher in a new era of increased growth and renewed confidence in the company. The broad mission statement and specific vision statement combined with the motivation of the market to look for better returns on investment puts Starbucks as a, as a good candidate to try to answer the what, why, how, and when questions required for good thought leadership strategy. A SWAT, a SWAT chart based on the 2013 Harvard strategic analysis identifies a series of strengths and opportunities that I think could align well with the thought leadership strategy. I highlight here two strengths that have overlap with identified opportunities, uh, high quality products, and technology. I've actually uh, highlighted three strengths, but the third one, um, I, I think that that strength of the strong market position really needs to be leveraged in order to support these new opportunities in technology and brand extension through investments in premium products and tech. In 2016, Starbucks held almost 40% market share over Dunkin' Donuts and other related competitors. Leveraging this position, the brand can extend its high quality products through initiatives like the Starbucks Reserve. Mobile order and pay and the Starbucks Rewards Loyalty Program both continue to feed a database of ever increasing transactional data history. This data, used in conjunction with the right tools, can help predict consumer trends and increase the quality of service. The assumption here is that both opportunities really need to leverage that sustained financial position to run course through the startup challenges. For the first strength, Starbucks has created a premier brand to integrate the vision of being the premier purveyor of the finest coffee in the world. 
They intend to accomplish this by adding more stringent quality requirements on rare coffee beans from small lots in specific locations around the world. This new concept could serve as a low-rate development platform to identify key future investments that could be converted into the general brand. If you split the revenue data for the past eight years by product type, you can see how the individual revenue streams have grown over time and at what rate. Beverages in 2016 generated 58% of the total revenue, and it's the total revenue here in this case is $21.3 billion. From, 20, from 2009 to 2016, beverages saw a 2x increase in revenue generation. Food held at 16% last year, and also, but also saw a, uh, a 2x increase in the, uh, in the same eight-year period. Packaged products, including single-serve coffee and teas, while holding less revenue share than food, saw a 3x increase in growth in the same time period. The literature suggests that uh, the positioning of the products on the Boston Matrix has sort of changed over time dur and during different periods. Um, I I've created here where I believe these products would roughly sit today given these, uh, these latest numbers. My, my personal expectations of the, of the uh, Starbucks Reserve brand is that it's going to add an expensive premium that may or may not yield significant sort of independent profit on its own. Um, but I, 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 I expect it to, um, to behave more like a long-term research arm for Starbucks and, and sort of strategically push a few high potential products from the, rev, from the reserve menu out to the general stores at, some, at, a, at a nominal sort of general consumer price point. So now with the, uh, the, the craft uh, the craft uh, settlement in the past, Starbucks continues to profit from having direct access to grocery stores and could leverage that position also to release these premium products. The market for, the, for this true premium or ultra premium quality coffee is not well traveled uh, and it has the potential of being viewed as a, as a luxury during the, the next significant bear market. Um, given the attention, given enough attention and, and, and resources uh, with good management, I, I do think that it can be a very positive opportunity for the company to have space to innovate and elevate the brand to that next level that the, that the company vision prescribes. As a testament to the company's understanding the amount of attention that this level of innovation is going to require, Howard Schultz, longtime CEO of Starbucks, is stepping down to lead this effort personally. Kevin Johnson, who is the current president, COO, and has been on the board of directors for seven years, will be the new CEO starting April 3rd. Schultz says that, quote, this move ideally positions Starbucks to continue profitably growing our core business around the world into the future. Not surprisingly, the second growth strength leverages Kevin's tech years at Microsoft and Juniper Networks. An analyst recently wrote, Starbucks has evolved into more of a technology play than a pure brick, bricks and mortar outlet. Journalist Mike Elgin believes that Starbucks is no longer a food and beverage company, but a technology company. He feels, he feels this way based on Starbucks incorporation of tech into their stores. New features include uh, wireless charging, indoor location beacons, smart appliances, uh, mobile e-commerce, um, and, and ultra high speed wireless data. According to an article by Grill Goodman, Starbucks doubled its investment in digital initiatives for 2016 over 2015. Schultz identifies four key pillars of their digital plan. First, delivery. Starbucks is extending their mobile order and pay service to include a delivery option for consumers. Currently, this is uh, only available in Seattle and New York City. Second, personalized offerings. This technology sort of helps personalize um, the offers that it makes to its loyalty customers. Third, digital media. 
Starbucks Spotify is one example of the integrated digital media experience. Companies exploring uh, other media scenarios that might be interesting to consumers that align with the, uh, the overall mission. And fourth is global deployment. So the increase in this digital footprint, uh, not just in the US, but also around the world, uh, offers a, uh, an incredible amount of consumer data that, uh, that Starbucks can continue to use to enhance the business. The company, the mission of the company talks to, um, to inspiration and nurturing of the human spirit. The new, uh, the new connected digital infrastructure uh, could make the Starbucks experience more of a, of a destination for people to connect with each other and, and the music, the, the phone chargers, and, uh, and the, the fastest internet in town. Even, even if the, the customers aren't there to purchase a drink or food, uh, the, this, this nurturing environment aligns well with the, with the vision statement for Starbucks. The impact of mobile e-commerce is well understood to be significant. Karif and Patton note in a 2016 article that the increased use of mobile transactions might reshape how, stores, how some stores look. They speculate that Starbucks might begin to take on a different shape with fewer counters and more stations, kind of uh, like an Apple store. Um, Schultz suspects that the uh, mobile payment adoption in China and Japan is going to be significant and probably a lot quicker than the United States due to the faster uh, adoption of smartphones. My, my personal expectation is that if, if this is implemented correctly and, and reliably, uh, the, the added convenience and the useful predictive analytics can be used to drive additional demand through the app that would otherwise not have existed. I believe the effect on the Boston Matrix uh, is, is similar direction, but it's a different um, uh, mechanism. I think, I think uh, so contrary to what the reserve would be doing, right, this, this uh, having this, this digital app or uh, uh, digital front is, is going to, to try to pull the, uh, the, the quickly consumed products sort of upward um, as that transaction count kind of increases. Uh, with, with a nurturing environment that's created in the stores, um, I'm expecting a, a, a passive demand to sort of increase as well there. Um, compared to the Starbucks Reserve, I think this takes on a, a different market challenge, um, but that will also spur growth and, and bring in more revenue. In selecting the best fit, I think it's important to reflect back on what each of these thought leadership strategies accomplishes. Investments in store technology, data analytics, and smartphone integration uh, could could very well promote an inspiring and uh, and nurturing environment for for the customers. I think the um, the Starbucks Reserve concept is is really in, in in direct alignment with the Starbucks vision of being of, of being the purveyor of the finest coffee in the world. They they've given it the right amount of attention to pull it off by by assigning Schultz to to run it. Um, I, I believe it has great chances of yielding the intended result. Um, elevating the quality of, of a Starbucks brand to, to new heights seems to align well with the, uh, with the vision. Starbucks is making significant investments in both product quality and the digital footprint, following directly in line with both their vision and mission statements. The thought leadership strategies employed through these initiatives are powerful and really paint a picture to answer the what, why, how, and when questions that uh, I believe are, are um, key. I, I really think these, these four questions need to be answered um, to have an effective uh, strategy built, and I, I think they've done it. My, my opinion is that, is that really both of these strategies are great fits for the company and that Starbucks uh, should really continue to invest in both to improve the brand. Um, however, based on the, on the research that I've compiled in the study, I, I think the, the strategy that is most focused and, and specific in its objective with a clear alignment to the mission with the right people in place to pull it off is, is really the Starbucks Reserve.